Hello everyone, I'm Sebastian Lai and welcome to Econometrics. In this video, I'm going to show you how to test for joint significance in a regression using an F-test. I've got the MLB dataset from Wildridge loaded up, and we're going to run a regression of the log salary of a Major League Baseball player on the number of years in the Major Leagues, and then on a set of dummy variables for each of the fielding positions. So we have first base, second base, shortstop, third base, and outfield. I'm not going to put in catcher because that is going to be our base group. Remember that you can choose any of these positions as the base group. I just picked that one because it was last on the list. If we run the regression here, we can see our results. Our players get higher salaries the longer they have been playing Major League Baseball, and then we have salary adjustments for each of our fielding positions. Since all these are positive, we know that catchers have the lowest salary, and then we can go from there to see that first base, third base, and outfield generally have the highest salaries. Remember, since we ran this regression in logs, these are expressed as percentage changes. So for example, outfield players make about 38% higher salary than catchers. If we check out the p-values for the fielding positions, we can see that some of them look highly significant, like first base, and others, like shortstop, look not so significant. But it doesn't really make sense to assess the significance of these dummy variables individually because they all function together as a group. We wouldn't just take the shortstop dummy variable out of the regression just because by itself it has a low t-statistic. Instead, we might want to test for the joint significance of all of these dummy variables as a group. And for that, we're going to need the F-test. For the F-test, we are going to compare the RSS from our original regression, which we call the unrestricted model. That's approximately 315. And then we're going to restrict the model such that we assume that all the coefficients for our fielding positions are zero. That is to say, we're going to run the regression without those variables in it. So we'll run the regression of log salary on years, leaving all the fielding positions out. We can see that the RSS has gone up, meaning that we've lost some explanatory power by leaving these dummy variables out of the model. Before we move on, the other thing I need to point out is we always need to check the number of observations on our restricted and our unrestricted model. If they're the same, nothing to worry about. If they're different, that means that we had some missing data in the excluded variables, and we need to be really careful to continue to exclude those observations in the restricted model. It's not a problem here. Now we're ready to go ahead and calculate our F statistic. To do that, we're going to need to save the RSS from each of our restricted and unrestricted regressions. I'm going to save as a scalar the RSS from the restricted model, so I'll put R for that and then use the stored value ERSS. It's also possible to calculate the F statistic using the R squared, so let's go ahead and save that now for using it later. So I'm going to call that R2, R for restricted. You can call these scalars whatever you want, as long as it's something you'll remember. Now I need to go and run our unrestricted model again, and then save those values as scalars as well. So I'm going to take the RSS unrestricted, and that's going to be the RSS from this regression, and then I'm going to do the same thing for the R squared. Now we're ready to calculate our F statistic. We use display, and on the numerator we need the difference in the RSS from the restricted model minus the RSS from the unrestricted model. Divide that by Q, the number of restrictions we made. Since we eliminated five dummy variables from our unrestricted model, we need to put a five in for the number of restrictions. Close the parentheses, and then divide by the RSS from the unrestricted model, and then divide that by degrees of freedom, N minus K minus one. Here we have N of 353, K is six, and then minus one more for the constant. That number is always going to show up right here in our unrestricted model. It's going to be 346. Close all those parentheses and we get an F statistic of about 2.3. The next thing we need to do is calculate our critical values from the F distribution. 
To do this, we're going to use the inverse f tail function. This works very similarly to the inverse t tail, but for the f distribution, we need to give it two pieces of information. We need our number of restrictions, which is five, degrees of freedom, 346, and the probability corresponding with the significance level that we're interested in. Let's start with a 10% significance level, so we're going to put 0.1. Since the f tail is a one-tailed test, unlike the t, we don't have to divide by two there. We get 1.86, that tells us that we're going to reject the null that all of those fielding positions have a zero coefficient at the 10% level. Then let's do this again for the 5% level, so we'll put 0, 0.5 right there. Our F statistic is still bigger than this, so we're going to reject at the 5% level, and then let's go to the 1% level. And here you can see that we fail to reject because our F statistic is lower than this critical value. We can verify this using a p-value, and for the p-value, we are going to need f tail. Again, the pieces of information we need are number of restrictions, which is 5, our degrees of freedom, 346, and then we're going to plug in our f statistic, which is this line right here. I'm just going to paste that whole thing in, close the parentheses. And you can see that we get about 4.4% as our p-value, which lies between 1% and 5%. And so, again, that agrees with our rejection at the 5% level, but fail to reject at the 1% level. The alternative way to calculate our F statistic is with the R squared. To do that, we're going to take in the numerator, the unrestricted R squared, minus the restricted R squared, divide by Q, which is still 5. And then on the bottom, we have 1 minus the unrestricted divided by degrees of freedom, which is still 346. Close all those parentheses. And there it looks like I actually saved the scalar as R2, not R2UR, no problem. We can just delete that. And we get our exact same F statistic that we did before. The last thing that I want to do is calculate our F statistic for overall significance. This tests the joint significance of every variable that is in our regression. So that's our five fielding positions and also years. To do that, we're going to use the formula R squared over K on top divided by 1 minus R squared divided by degrees of freedom on the bottom. So we're going to take the R squared, which I already saved as R2, divide by K, the number of variables in our regression, which is 6, divide that by 1 minus the R squared. And again, remember that R2 is just what I saved it as. You might have called it something different. And then divide that by the degrees of freedom. We're going to need another set of parentheses here to do that. That's still 346. We get 32. And if we go up to our regression output, we can see that the F statistic that it gives us right here is for our overall significance. 32 is a very high F stat. You can see that the corresponding p-value is so low that Stata has rounded it off to zero, so we have very strong overall significance in this regression. Stata does have a built-in command called test that we can use to check our work here. I'm going to go ahead and run our unrestricted regression again, and then I'm going to use test, and then all we do is list the variables that we want to test. And so to verify our result for our fielding positions, we can select all of those variables again and run the test, and you can see that we get the exact same p-value of 2.3 that we did back here, and we also get the same p-value of 0.04, same thing right here. And that is how you do an F-test in Stata. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Thanks for watching.